This is New Cap News with Jacob Zare. Good evening. Thank you for joining us. You know, it's uh, kind of funny. First day of winter, and here we are talking about baseball. You know what? But it warms you up, doesn't it? Uh, yeah. I don't know. We've been having the cold weather, so, you know, it'd be nice to throw in some baseball stories. If I was actually it? throwing the ball, I get warmed up. <laughs> well, there you the go. story, I don't know if that'll do it for you. But first day of winter, shortest day of the year release. Um, not a terrible day out there, though. No, it was okay. Brutal wind, though. It was not pleasant being outside. But 1030 tonight, that is officially winter for us and right now in Lloyd Minster we're sitting at minus six with an 85 percent humidity winds are coming in from the west northwest at 18 kilometers per hour giving us a cool wind chill of minus 12. across the region it's minus three in the lakelands and minus two in the battle fords with some increasing clouds i'll have more information on your local forecast coming up in a few minutes we've all been watching the disaster unfold in the philippines Flash floods killed over a thousand people and many more are still missing. Tens of thousands have been displaced and are in need of humanitarian relief efforts. Here in the Midwest, members of the Filipino community are doing what they can to help ease the suffering and now they're asking for your help. I have a friend there that she told me her house was gone and all her belongings in Iligan City was gone. So that's the first time I heard about uh, the calamity. Joanne Weinkoff has been in Canada for a long time now, but spent much of her youth in the now devastated region. That area is really where I grow up, like born and raised, and 20 years I live in that area. So I really know that most of my relatives and most of my friends lives in that area. So it really affects me personally. The floodwaters came at night, taking many by surprise. But what was also surprising was the speed at which they inundated low-lying areas. Officials and protesters within that country, as well as experts from the United Nations and other climate watch groups, are pointing to deforestation from illegal logging as a major contributing factor to this disaster. It's something Joem has seen firsthand and heard about from her friends and relatives who still live there. Calamity or typhoon, we, it's beyond our control. But there is natural resources. Trees absorb water. Mountains absorb water. For now, the main focus is on providing for the survivors. Clothes and money are the most pressing needs, and the Filipino community is hoping that Midwest residents' generosity will help them help their families back home. Philippines is uh, a third world country, but there's always hope there. That's all, that's all what we have. It's the hope. If you would like to make a donation, you can do so directly to Joam herself at Sun Life Financial or to two businesses in Lloydminster, Asia's finest grocery store or Negosho Filtrate. Just before Christmas, the Salvation Army Church has been vandalized. Sometime between 1 and 9 this morning, Lieutenant Kim Bridge says the entrance wall of the church was spray painted. The graffiti has the message, take the risk of thinking for yourself. Well, it's unfortunate when anybody thinks that they their statement needs to be um, uh, spray painted on the side of any building that isn't their own. Salvation Army immediately called the police. Bridges is disappointed someone felt that they needed to vandalize the church to get their message out. She says while she doesn't have time to clean the mess, she isn't going to let it bother her. It actually isn't disheartening to me um, because no one can steal my joy, um, because it doesn't come from my surroundings or the situation. Um, it's Christmas time, it's about Jesus. This is the second act of vandalism on the church this year. Impaired driving and theft are both increasing problems as we enter the holiday season, and the Lloydminster RCMP are preparing for their busiest time of year. Locals will start noticing an increase in check stops here in the border city, with the RCMP cracking down on holiday drinking and driving. We expect that Christmas parties increase the closer you get to Christmas and uh, we, we are hoping that the public is aware by now uh, to take a taxi cab walk or get a designated driver. Theft also rises on this week every year. Busy shopping malls mean busy parking lots and shoppers who leave their newly purchased gifts unattended create an easy target for thieves. We do encourage people who are shopping at shopping malls to lock their vehicles, don't leave their vehicles running, and if they have purchased a, a big item um, of value, to maybe place it in the trunk. RCMP are urging locals to be proactive and drive safely during the Christmas holidays. Tis the season for school pageants and the like, and after the break, we'll see some local kids strut their stuff at their annual talent show. 